Hello you 7, I hope you're all doing very well. Uh, this time we're starting a new project called Portraiture. So your learning objective for this lesson is to understand the work of artists who produce different styles of drawings of the human face. And this is basically called portraiture. So portraiture is basically a drawing or a painting or, or a photograph of a face. Um, can be your own face, that would be called a self-portrait, or another person's face. So your task for uh, the lesson is you're going to produce a booklet or a fact sheet on three important portrait or self-portrait artists. So the artist we will be looking at in this lesson is Leonardo da Vinci, Pablo Picasso, Julian Opie, Andy Warhol. I'm sure you've maybe heard of at least two of them, um, but it doesn't matter if you don't know who they are because we're going to go through them and you're going to do your own research about them uh, later on. So we're going to look at Leonardo da Vinci. So here are a few examples of Leonardo's portraits. Um, the first one is Head of a Woman. The second one I'm sure you all know is the Mona Lisa and the third one is a self-portrait of himself. So Leonardo was an Italian sculptor, painter, architect and inventor. So he wasn't just a painter, he did a lot of things and he was hugely influenced by his interests in philosophy, anatomy, science and maths. Leonardo da Vinci was born in the region of Florence in Italy he is widely considered as one of the most diversely talented individuals to have ever lived. And I'm going to show you a video of him, which I think uh, about him, which I think is going to be more interesting than me just talking about him. So, The celebrated painter and inventor was born in 1452 in Vinci, Italy. And those were only two of his many talents. He was also a sculptor, architect, philosopher, engineer, and scientist. His portrait, the Mona Lisa, is the best known painting in the world. He painted it between 1503 and 1506. And the identity of the woman behind that mysterious smile is still disputed today. Almost as famous is his mural, The Last Supper, which portrays Jesus with his disciples. Leonardo experimented with a new type of paint for the mural, which is why it's unfortunately very faded. Typical for the Renaissance, his subjects were mostly religious. Yet his work demonstrates that his true fascination was with nature. Why clouds form, how plants grow, or how the human body is put together. Anatomy is also the focus of the Vitruvian Man. A human being standing in the center of a circle and a square. Leonardo's groundbreaking drawing depicts the ideal human body measurements and proportions. Today, the drawing is featured on Italy's one euro coin. One of Leonardo's greatest dreams was to fly. By observing the movements of birds, he invented the very first flying machines. A parachute was later assembled by scientists in the year 2000 using his original design. And it worked. The sky wasn't the limit for Leonardo, who was fascinated with water too. He studied the flowing motions of the waves and applied his discoveries to technological innovations, including diving gear, irrigation systems, and the very first water meter. As an engineer, Leonardo was centuries ahead of his time. As early as 500 years ago, he designed the first precursors of the tank and the automobile, and even a solar reflector. He spent his final years in France. By his death in 1519, he had developed a legendary reputation as a uomo universale, or jack of all trades. To this very day, Leonardo da Vinci is widely considered to be one of the most extraordinary people of all time. So the next artist we're going to look at is Pablo Picasso. So I'm sure you all may have seen this first image here where he's created a portrait of um, a woman using different shapes. And I think it's very interesting how he's 
um, created the nodes. He's used a bunch of triangles within triangles and it's like a face within a face and it's very, very psychedelic, you could say. So Picasso was a Spanish painter, sculptor, printmaker, ceramist and stage designer. So kind of like Leonardo da Vinci where he He's not just a uh, person who draws or paints, he, he has a lot of other interests that he's very good at. Pablo Picasso is regarded as one of the most influential artists of the 20th century. So what I actually find very interesting about these portraits in front of us is that um, you can see obviously the first portrait is very abstract because a lot of shapes are being used. And the second one is, is more realistic, as with the third one, which is quite realistic too. So here's a video of Pablo Picasso. Picasso was an artist who made all kinds of art. He made paintings, sculptures, and even costumes. Not only did he make all kinds of art, he made lots of art. Over 500,000 pieces. Picasso was a very passionate person. He made art with all his heart and energy. He was also very good with the ladies. Picasso loved doves. He built birdhouses in his bedroom so they could visit. His wife did not like that. There are quite a few dove paintings that Picasso made. While some artists are only famous for one style, Picasso is famous for many. During the blue period, Picasso was very sad and used a lot of the color blue. In the rose period, Picasso used lots and lots of pink. Some say that's when he was in love. Cubism was a style that Picasso created when he was experimenting with shapes. No surprise that Picasso loves shapes. The next artist we're going to look at is Julian O.P. And I think quite a lot of you will like his style. It's very, very cartoony, I would say. It's very basic and um, it just looks very appealing. I really like the colours that have been used. It's very graphic. Julian O.P. is an English artist whose portraits of the human face are sometimes characterised by black outlines with flat areas of colour and minimal detail. So it goes to the extent where the eye can just become a little black circle of the pupil and the head is sometimes represented by a circle with a space where the neck would be. So it is very minimal, very simple. So yeah, this is um, another artist you can consider writing about when you create your fact sheet. And finally, we have Andy Warhol. So... Andy Warhol, who is the guy on the right with the crazy hair, he was an American painter and printmaker and a leading figure in the pop art movement, which focused on popular culture and icons of the late 50s. So he used objects which were mass produced, such as advertising, comic books and mundane cultural objects. He uses a technique called screen printing to get blocks of colour and outlines. His works explore the relationship between artistic expression, advertising and celebrity culture that flourished by the 1960s. He used a variety of media including painting, silk screening, photography, film and sculpture. So what these artists have in common is that they don't just stick to one medium when they're making their portraits. They like to use a variety of media. So like we said with Andy Warhol, he uses paint, silk screening, photography, film and sculpture. And it's all very, very, very creative. So going back to the task that I want you to do is you're going to produce a fact sheet on three important artists that we looked at. So any of the three that we discussed. So what would be a great way of presenting your fact sheet is um, 
to do it on your computer which would be great and it would be very easy to upload as well but if you do feel like working on paper that's fine. So here we have uh, an image of portrait by Andy Warhol. So I'm just going to write Andy Warhol at the top there. See I want my image to be in the center and then here you're just going to write some facts about him and his artwork and you do the same for the other two artists you can do it on separate word document sheets or it's completely up to you how you want to design it if you want to do it on paper it would be lovely if you could print out the images cut them out and stick them on your paper and then write down your facts about the artists 